Wow! Ha! Hey, I'm Cub Carson from Virgin Radio 1069 in Ottawa, Canada. The Alexander Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals tonight. What got me into radio? I, I, I guess two things. Uh, one was uh, my grade 8 English teacher at uh, Darcy McGee High School. Her name was Wanda Parlier. Um, I, uh, I got into a lot of trouble talking during class all the time. And after one uh, particular outburst, I heard what the whole. Uh, she made me stay after class and she said to me, you seem to like the attention you get when you speak. Have you ever thought about getting into radio? And that came out around the same time, or that happened around the same time that uh, uh, Robin Williams starred in Good Morning Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam! And uh, the combination of those two things within the same week uh, was, that was it. What's my routine like in the morning? Um, <clears throat> the alarm clock goes off, uh, I, I hit it, and then I sleep for another hour and a half. <laughs> and my warm-up is singing in the car on the way to the station. Saw a little elf stole something from my shelf. I'm stone. <laughs> write it down. <laughs> write it down. Write it down. What's it like working with Kitty and Jay? Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of different people on this show in a short amount of time. And radio's like that. There's a lot of changes. Kitty and I had great chemistry for, for many years because she was always filling in for whoever would be going on vacation if they were doing the news. And we always got along really, really well. Uh, with Jay, it was uh, a friend of mine who, uh, who introduced Jay to, uh, to myself. Uh, I'll be honest, we got hammered in the market one night. We racked up about a $350 tab on the, on the, business, on the company's uh, uh, credit card. And, uh, and from that moment on, uh, it, it's, it's like I've known Jay my entire life. And when you find people like that in this industry, you do everything you can to make sure you continue to work with them because it's so rare and they, they talk about chemistry being very very important and, and for once I finally believe that they finally got it right for, uh, for me and for the stations. After 10 years of being on the radio we're gonna let him come on our airwaves and say goodbye properly. I leave with absolutely no regrets whatsoever, and it was a hell of a run. I got a lot of friends in that building. I just got to thank everybody out there, especially the listeners. You never really get a chance to say goodbye to everybody, so I've had the time of my life. Uh, all I ever wanted to do was, was work on the morning show at, at 1504 Maryville Road, and I did that before I hit 40. So, you know what? The last 10 years were a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to what the next 10 years can bring. So I will never forget what you guys have done for us. Thank you so much. Uh, you go through a, a range of emotions, uh, you know, like there's, there's relief in a sense that, ha, huh, I can sleep in a bit now. There's a bit of frustration, you know, because you put so much of your, of your life and your heart and your soul into something, and, uh, and when your, uh, your livelihood is uh, kind of judged on pen and paper, I'm not the first person to lose my job on radio, I definitely won't be the last. And I'm just hoping that uh, it doesn't take me another 10 years to get back to where I was before. Uh, I don't regret anything that I've ever done over there. Uh, and I don't regret any of, the, uh, uh, any of the trouble that I may have caused while I was there at the same time. Because, I mean, you gotta, you got to have people thinking you're a little crazy to survive in this industry. And I think, uh, I, think I accomplished that while I was there. When you, when you do stand-up comedy, uh, you've got a crowd in front of you. You know what works. You know what doesn't work just based on you know, people laughing or not. Uh, you don't have that in the radio, unless it's the people that you're working with. I was lucky enough to work with uh, two of the funniest people that I've ever, I've ever met in the industry, and I'd like to work with them again eventually someday down the road. And uh, finally, I'll vote for you and provide you with a seductive hot oil massage with a happy ending if you can somehow deactivate Bay Ward Counselor Alex Cullen's email account. Nine emails from him while I was on vacation. And two, while I was writing this jewel. <laughs> if you're listening, Mr. Cullen, you're the only one I won't take the bribe from. Oh I don't necessarily want you to be mayor, but good luck with that. The day after I was let go, uh, I was up at 4.30. Um, not because I had slept for, you know, 10 hours or something like that, because I went to bed at about 1 o'clock in the morning, but it, my body was telling me, get up, get up, you're going to be late. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to stay up till like 2 o'clock in the morning, but I'll still be waking up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And uh, weekends are even worse because those are the days I should be sleeping in, and I'm still getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning. So the, the sleep schedule, it's completely out of whack, and that's strictly because of the body clock. Uh, Jay and I have talked uh, a couple of times. 
uh, via email and a couple of text messages. It's difficult in a sense because you're 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 breaking up, uh, you know, a relationship. It's tough to maintain that close relationship right after something like that happens because you don't have you don't have any time to really catch your breath when the announcement was made where the the new show was going to be it wasn't like he was given a week off to decompress it was like boom it's done three days later you're back on the air because you're professional and that's how you have to to, to, to carry yourself in this industry there, there's so few jobs in, in radio nowadays uh, that you keep what you've got unless you've got something else lined up and uh, and hey man Take the job, keep the job. I know what it's like. There's not a lot of jobs out there, not right now. Will I get back on the air next week? I don't know. I honestly don't really know at this at this point. Helping to raise over two million dollars for Chio uh, with their radio funds um, for one little station with maybe 35, 40 employees. Uh, we've we were tighter than any other radio station I've ever worked for in my life. Uh, I'm proud of the relationships that I had with everybody in that building. Uh, some were good, uh, some weren't so good, uh, but overall, uh, I learned more than I ever thought I could learn in one place of work, and, uh, and I leave with, uh, with my head held high. The main reason why I wanted to get into radio was music, was rock and roll. Um, I, I absolutely loved it, and there's no greater rush in the world than being on stage in front of, well, Snoop Dogg, there was 35,000 people at Blues Fest and I was on stage and when I got on stage and I said hello to everybody that feeling the rush from the crowd I, I th it was two years ago and I'm, I still have a giant smile on my face mind you there was a lot of people smoking dope at that time so I might have been just stoner I as a guide I don't know Ross Ribliati did it first all right so it's not like I'm drifting into unfamiliar territory here but uh, no um the friendships uh, that I made uh, were, were incredible. The lessons I learned were, were even more so. And uh, yeah, I leave with uh, no hard feelings, no regrets whatsoever. Now let's go have a picnic. <laughs> <laughs>